with my haters God bless fake hoes God bless these haters Cause God only knows that All I do is get it All I, all I do is get it All I do is get it All I, all I do is get it All I do is get it All I, all I do is get it All I do is get it All I, all I do is get it So God bless fake niggas Oh my God Hey everybody Welcome to this very hot and humid <coughs> Sunday of the comment section. I am your host, Shirley Phillips. And I am Emmanuel Anzules, Fox Baldwin. <sighs> I think I'm just going to drop the Emmanuel Anzules and go by Fox Baldwin starting in the fall. Because we're confused. America's you know? confused. New York is confused. <laughs> we don't know what to call him from week to week. Yeah, and so. even on social media, you can only look me up as Fox Baldwin. The Emmanuel Anzules does not exist. So when do I use my government name? When do I use my government name? But that's actually a good thing, though, because your students won't be able to locate you as right, easily right, 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 under right, right. Fox And I feel Baldwin. like there's a personality when it comes to the Fox Baldwin. Absolutely. So I can keep the Emmanuel Anzules more professional. So if I wrote a book, it can stay as Emmanuel Anzules. I concur. You know? So I'm going forward. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, so <laughs> I don't think it really matters. Same spirit. Either way. Exactly. At the end of the day. <laughs> we, we're really, really hot. Like, we have AC in the building, but for whatever reason, it doesn't want to blow on us. I don't know if it's like a racial thing or what, because we're like black and brown people here, but the AC is, 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 is racist. <laughs> and, um, or maybe it's because we're people of color. The AC feels that we can handle the heat a little bit better than our Trying online. to bring us back to our roots. Trying to bring us back to the motherland. Okay. Yep. So we're excited. I'm really, really excited about this week because for all my Pisces brethren, <coughs> And sisters, it is Shark Week, and <laughs> I love all things shark. I love all things fish. I'm excited. There's shark parties. There's this whole Discovery Channel. Um, what do you call it? Um, not documentary, but what do you call it when they focus on one thing? I can't with you. Anyway, Shirley walked in and she was like, "Happy Shark Week." <laughs> and He's like, "What? What is that?" He doesn't <laughs> care. No one cares. Apparently, no one cares except me. But it's a thing, okay, for us shark lovers. But um, also. <coughs> Sadly, Orange is the New Black has concluded, and I literally watched the entire season seven at once. You binged? I binged, and I'm still exhausted. I'm, I'm tired. Um, it was worth it, though. It was worth it. It was... I was satisfied with the ending, but I did have some questions. Mm. Emmanuel has not seen... I haven't seen, I think, seasons five through seven. So the last Sir. season... I don't know what season it was where they were, they like split them up basically because they had the prison hostage. That was, that was five? five. So I saw that the end of season, season five. five. That that last episode of season five was so beautiful. Okay, what happened with Puse? And then I can kind of tell you. Um, she. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I. Don't I, don't. Tell I'm not gonna divulge. So I don't want to give you. Because I do want to catch up. Any spoilers? But I will say this. Based on this season, they did set up a GoFundMe for female inmates, for um, women and children that have been affected by this whole immigration fiasco, for, wow. yeah, drug abuse, uh, drug, what do you call it, drug rehabilitation centers. There's a GoFundMe under the guise of Pusay Washington. It's actually called the Pusay Washington Fund. And if you are interested, oh, that is, that's amazing. Whether you watch the show or not, uh, you can donate. You can donate via text. You can donate through their website. I guess if you just go to GoFundMe and search it, it'll give you the directions. But it's for a really good cause. And I believe, don't quote me, but I believe it is tax deductible. I'm not sure. When so did the season come out? Just recently? It came out two days ago. And I, I was unaware because I was told that it was canceled, like permanently, like already canceled. But this is just the last season so i wasn't expecting a season seven so this it's was a really the <coughs> five seasons that i saw of the show were really just phenomenal fen just phenomenal in general the the writing the acting yeah. a lot of breakout stars i think the show gave a lot of opportunities for female actors to really do their thing yeah. and showcase their amazing talents right all of the women many of them were brand new they to were the unknowns completely they were unknown. unknowns. so i love the fact that it's a female cast all the leads are female and the the show really showcases a part of our society that we completely we ignore. forget about yeah we forget about i think when people think of prison or penal system they think of men they forget That's about the women of. yep and they forget about the women that have children that are affected by this so this season touched a lot on that the relationships between mothers and daughters 
relationships between inmates and their children in general and some of the sacrifices that they have to make. Mm -hmm. I really wish you had saw this because now I can't really <laughs> say too much more because I don't want to spoil it for you. We but can talk about it when I finally do watch. I, need to I, do, watch. I do need to watch season six and then the last season seven. Sir. So when I do, then we can discuss it on the show. But I'm afraid <laughs> that there are people out there that have not even seen season one. So <gasps> if that's you, please catch I up. I need y'all to get your lives together and go yeah. ahead and binge watch. We're going to be talking about it. So we're gonna see, I, I, I can wait one more week. You got one more week, Emmanuel, <laughs> to get your life. I have so much going on. I don't know if I can do it in a week. No. I need an extension. <laughs> you need an ex you need extended time? Yes, please. They actually brought that up on this season. Someone needed extended time for an exam. Huh. Which we talk about a lot. We and talk she, knew about she, she was aware that she needed extended time? She knew that she had some type of learning disability, but she wasn't sure. Crazy her, I'm not going to divulge who okay. it was. Okay, Shirley. Um, <laughs> but she ended up having to get extended time for a test. That's a real thing. That's a very, very real thing. So she advocated for herself. Um, no. Someone else figured out that she had it because she had always been just told you're dumb, you're stupid by her parents. I'm trying not to ruin this for you. You know what, let's leave it there. Okay, let's just leave it there. But it actually ties into another topic that we needed to focus on today, which is this and whole idea that. of people not paying attention in school and having really, really, really poor grammar because it's like affecting my life because it's raising my blood pressure every time I see mm. incorrect usage and conventions in like multi-billion dollar ads. Yeah. I was watching. Say more. You, you ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was watching TV and a Sonic commercial came on. Okay. The burger chain? The burger chain. Huh. Multi-billion dollar franchise. Right, right. <sighs> you ready? <clears throat> what happened? Sonic used the word mines. The guy in the commercial said, mines looks like this in reference to a possessive of a hamburger. So it should be my burger yeah. or mine looks like this. Without Mine's this. is one of my pet peeves because I hear like PhD professionals using, using mines. mines as a possessive. And I think I've heard it more in New York than I have in any other state. Huh. Why is that? Anybody care to shed light I've on? So I had this conversation with an individual from Africa. Okay. He went to college in Africa, came to the States to do his thing he has a law degree in africa okay right and i was talking to him about how grammar is a big part of my everyday life because i'm so particular when it comes to my students grammar as a teacher when it comes to my own grammar and how i write regardless of how casual conversations are it matters I to keep my grammar as proper as possible right this man said that grammar and language are constantly changing and so it is up to the society of the time to figure out what words work for them and what words don't. So almost like language is evolving constantly. If a word is being used so much, then it needs to stick because people are using the word for a reason and we need to stop placing these conventions on them. Um, How do you feel about I that? I agree to a certain extent, but to the extent that word, like new words are being added, right? not incorrect usage of a word that already existed like if the word pretty has historically been an adjective but someone wants to change it to a noun <laughs> then fine because you're not using it incorrectly you created a new use for that word but i think these people just didn't pay attention in school or was never taught because a lot so of adults how would they, they get to the level of actually making it to a national ad without somebody calling people don't on it. research people don't go back and proofread or edit it's like everything is rush 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 and then some people just don't know like af like you said after you hear something so many times you start to think that that is the correct way so it's up to <laughs> like the sages like myself you know speech. what word Shirley what is my pet peeve what when people say supposedly oh god supposedly supposedly Supposedly, <laughs> ambulance. I don't know what an ambulance is. Uh, I don't know what an ambulance is. I don't know what an ambulance. <laughs> I asked her. A X E. I asked her. You killed her. You, you asked. Or did you ask her a question? Did you kill her? Or did you ask her a question? And you still walk in these streets. 
Um, what's another one? Pacifically. <laughs> Pacifically. There was another one. Oh, oh my God. this one. When someone dies. <laughs> you already know what I'm going to say. No. Sorry for your lost L-O-S-T. Sir. Happy New Year's. <laughs> my lost L-O-S-S or my lost. There, I, I don't know how we can... We don't teach grammar anymore, to I be do. honest. You do, but how many people who are teachers are actually spending the time to teach grammar? This is the problem, we're though. To a test? We're teaching to a test. Y'all are teaching to a test. I'm the Harriet Tubman of the, Inga, the English classroom. I do what okay, I want. Now, Harriet Tubman. Um, I, it's, I'm under the railroad in my class. Your movie is coming out in November, Amen. By the way. Amen. Praise him. Harriet Tubman was a Pisces, by the way. Um, so, so she would have enjoyed Shark Week. Absolutely. She would have loved Shark Week. And... <laughs> It's the the system. It's not entirely teacher's fault. The system will not allow us to teach what we know to needs to be taught. Surely, we've had this conversation before, and I told you it is it is designed this way for a reason. It has a purpose, right? We don't spend time teaching grammar because if our communities learn the grammar and mm -hmm. learn to speak mm -hmm. the proper way mm -hmm. and are able to elevate themselves mm -hmm. out of this cycle of poverty and know what the white folk know mm -hmm. then there will be no more division of there's no more division like you can't keep us at the bottom if we are educated there's no more division and so it is all by design in my it opinion. is by design and and how do i know because i think we talked about this we like talked about before this the but the specialized high school test right they got rid of logical reasoning and put grammar because they knew that a lot of these black and brown kids not that they can't they haven't been taught proper grammar so for them it's a real struggle when you're asking them to identify which sentence isn't parallel they don't know because they've never learned it mm -hmm. so and those that can is because they learned it at home or they grew up kind of knowing it but i'm sure it takes some time to figure out what the test is actually looking for some, right it takes but some the time. kids that are really successful at this are the white kids that come from privilege because that's the language or the asian success. kids that have been studying for this test since they were like since they were five, five. Yeah. <laughs> literally <laughs> Black, brown, and black kids who are seeing the test for the first time have had zero tutoring mm -hmm. when it comes to it, are unable to do well on it. It's and even once mind. they're tutored, like once you get the Kaplan prep book, if I'm constantly hearing incorrect grammar in my home, around my friends, I'm being yep. socialized to the, it's very difficult to unlearn, you know, what you've been socialized or to. Or you came from a home do. where the first language is in English, where all you hear is Spanish or That's whatever it. other language they speak at your home. Right? That's How it. do you master this test? How do you master it? Something we can master though. Is money. Is <laughs> money, yes. <laughs> we can we're master segwayed. these coins. <laughs> so we're segueing into what we're actually talking about today, which is money, lack thereof, and budgeting 101. So we have the incomparable Miss Shamika Murphy here today to talk to us about some of the mistakes that she sees as thank you. <laughs> thank you, Shamika. Thank you, Shamika. Some of the mistakes that she sees as, uh, you know, a tax analyst, as an entrepreneur that focuses on, you know, budgeting and finances and for money. black and brown people. So maybe she can give us some, you know, some jewels that we can take away today. I know I need some. Yeah. I definitely need some. I feel like money has never been my forte. We never had it growing up. So I never had to learn how to deal with money or how to save. Like, I never had to save growing it's up. It's a big issue. It's, it's a big issue. And I feel like if you are not the type of person that seeks it on your own it will not come to you without you getting out there and actually doing your research it needs so. to be a class I, I said this a while we actually have implemented it in uh, one of our after school programs but yeah we have it at my school as well it's in, it's a necessity the kids don't have it until their senior year they've already so started working point, absolutely and they've already built and developed really bad habits when it comes to money right mm -hmm. so and attitudes. by the time you're 17 and 18 you kind of already established the way that you want to deal with money. Mm -hmm. So what, whatever it is that you earn mm -hmm. through your little after school job, mm -hmm. you've already figured out how you're trying to spend it. So <laughs> I think that middle school will probably be a more appropriate time to start building. Possibly right elementary, course. honestly. Yeah, absolutely. Possibly elementary. There was a book. I went to a fair a couple months back and there was actually a, a book, like a beginner's investment book. And it was a picture book meant for like first and second graders and it taught them how to have their piggy bank and how much we have in six months how much we have in a year what can you and then there was like a continuation so it goes from kindergarten to like um what do you got third fourth fifth grade and then middle school so that they're getting these tidbits as they you know grow 
and I thought that was awesome. I don't know the author's name. I got to go home and figure it out, but <laughs> it was definitely something that's needed and necessary. Yeah. So there's not enough out um, there. There's, there's not, not enough, enough at there. all. So people are not financially literate. My and parents weren't. I definitely was not. It shows. I'm still struggling, but Shamiga is here to definitely help so us. So you have like $800 loafers, so maybe no, that's honey. why They look can't. like they are $800. <laughs> I wish we had a shoe cam. He's starting. <laughs> He's starting. His they shoes are cost $800. Yes, they are. No. He's got red bottom yeah. loafers on, and no. he's making us all feel poor. Don't believe the hype. Don't believe the hype. <laughs> you got to make it look like it's $800. <laughs> Touche. You got to take it till you make it, exactly. right? Exactly. Take it till you make it. But we are going to take a break, and we will be back again with Miss Shamika Murphy, who is going to drop these, what do we yes. call it? Money moves, money moves. <laughs> money moves. <laughs> We're trying to make money moves. We'll be right back with the comment section, guys. Kicking with singing. Did I sound like I did? back we're still melting but we're back with the comment section <laughs> everybody is going to lose weight like after this show <laughs> i it's think that was the goal today that was the goal they did this on purpose few weekend pounds you know a few weekend pounds got it <laughs> you're not joining she doesn't want to be a part of this but we are back with our guest Mika <laughs> murphy from solidify nancho round of applause please for my sister <laughs> how are you and you look amazing. You do look amazing. Thank you for joining us today. <sighs> Can you help us? We need help, Shamika. Like, real life, serious help. She can help. Um, Possibly. I think if I knew what that work entailed, I would be able to give you a better answer. We need more information. I think I've, I've started already. I've started doing some work, you know, like budgeting, which is something that I wasn't doing before. I think will allow me to save. 
And I think that's having a budget. Having, having a budget. Having a budget. So a person only asking the person managing it. Which so make it. we make budgets all the time. There's always tweets and spreadsheets and things like that. But a budget needs to be activated. So the first step of actually doing budget means you're aware that you know you need to do something. Mm -hmm. And then the other part that is typically the hardest part for everyone is actually activating it on applying that self-discipline that you need to actually work budget. Um, so that, that, for me, that's the biggest struggle I have in this business. It's not telling people about, you know, the importance of finances, the importance of saving. People sit there and listen to that conversation, they're okay. <laughs> the hardest part of things may not at least are on the same page, both on the same importance of things, is getting you to actually do the work of saying, okay, I, I, I want this financial goal so bad that I'm going to do what it takes to the sacrifice that they um, That's right. They, if they take up of it, right? Um, I don't necessarily like to use the word sacrifice all the time because it kind of gives me thought of deprivation and I think we can ourselves a lot I agree. Um, but compromise. Um, one of the questions I often ask is, you know, what are you willing to compromise today for that tomorrow? Mm. I love that. Right? So before you give us any more, tell us a little bit about what you do um, with your business and how you got started. Well, I, I got started actually in taxes only. Um, went to school for accounting, came out of school in 2001, I believe. Mm -hmm. And it was the odd time of year. So all the recruiters come out. <laughs> You know, in March and February, and so they're looking to recruit everyone to start like that. Mm -hmm. I was the oldest, oldest person that decided I was going to go ahead and do, you know, my master's and undergrad. I finished both of them four and a half years in December. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to hire me? They're not hiring right now, man. <laughs> Damn. <okay>. Moratorium. <laughs> they're not hiring right now. Because numbers always came easy for me. And then that was it. And see, that's what my, my next question was going to be, because numbers don't come easy for me. Like, I'm more of a writer, speaker. I get very intimidated by math, unless it's like cashing my paycheck or, you know, counting. And I get intimidated by words. But you are great at it. Isn't that interesting? Any class that I ever had that had no pictures in the book, no formulas, or no numbers, I failed. I failed by wow. three times. Really? Just putting it out there. <laughs> that is interesting. And it's, it's not Our uncommon for girls. Yes. It is not common for girls. Yeah. We need no. to break that stereotype. But yeah. there's, there's a little bit of truth in there somewhere. I don't know why girls tend to get so intimidated by numbers. Because words, I feel like, are more emotional. Like, you have to feel. You know I, what I'm I saying? Just, you have to it, interpret. You have I'm, to, I'm very visual. 
So for me, the moment I have a full page of nothing but words on a page, okay, it's just like you you probably lose me within the first couple. Really? Of minutes. Yeah. Unless it's something that I'm really really interested in, because now for like taxes, right? I dive into you know trying to understand the new regulations coming out, and I can spend hours at that. And I can be up. I mean, sometimes I'm up at one, two, three o'clock in the morning just trying to find out what's new out there, what's going to help my clients with upcoming oh. tax season. But it's something I'm interested in. You're interested in that. So I'll, I'll do it then. But when I was in school, and it's just like, you have to go to school to get your high school diploma. It's not something you're interested it in. Was, I'm not everything interested that kind of came with getting that high school diploma, I wasn't interested in. Right. And I wasn't interested in everything that, that came a lot of with sense. going for a college degree. Either. And in college, a lot of people don't do well in classes that are required of you, right? Yeah. Take, but you start doing well the moment that you die. Major. Your actual yep. major. And Your so that's what major. happened with me. That's how I got started. As a little girl, Shamiko, were you interested in math? I was always great at math. Always. Always. Math. From the time that you were. I was always great at math wow. and always great at money. I would count the money. <laughs> at the table. I like making it. I like making money. I like the smell of it. I, I love money. But I would give it to her to manage it. I'm no good with that. I'm, it's, it's just like. We're spenders, Shirley. I'm, I'm a spender. We're spenders. So let's talk about that, right? You're calling Please. her a spender, right? So there this is the part calling the kettle black <laughs> with his eight hundred dollar yeah. loafers. Um, there are money personalities, right? And I think the moment we become conscious of what our strengths are, what our weaknesses are, it allows us to better operate in a in a place of, you know, being effective and successful. So what are some of the personalities? I'm curious. So you now. have the spender. So you were correct. And if and this is something I actually um, just co wrote a book called Love, Money and Power. And nice. I wrote it with another four um, experts, and it's all around relationships with money as well as, you divorces know. Divorces <laughs> for lack of money. Divorces for lack of money, yes. It, and oftentimes a lot of, I would say, experts have said it's the number one reason. Mm -hmm. People like to focus on infidelity, but in actuality, infidelity and, um, like, the financial strain and stress, it, it, they're head to head with each Amen. other, right? So you have the spender. You have the avoider. That's the person who doesn't even want to talk about it. Ooh. That's me. Can you be both? Can you have you can, multiple you can have personalities? <laughs> you can have multiple money personalities, yes. Um, but you have to recognize your traits, right? I'm and when the you, avoider. Yeah. When I you want to talk about it. Talking about money. And if that's your case, then you probably should get someone to do it for you, right? So if you're a spender, you're, you're not necessarily an avoider. You just are someone that... To me, you have an emotional relationship yes. with money, right? When yes. you're happy, Amen. it's like, oh, I gotta celebrate. <laughs> I'm gonna throw out all the cash, you know. And when you're down and depressed, you're like, oh man, gotta you go back go, bad. You go into that 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 I would say like you know therapy shopping, uh -huh. and you, you know you do those things. So you you understand when you understand that about yourself, you can manage yourself better, and you can surround yourself with a system or people that help keep you in line and keep you in check to nice. achieve your financial goals. Avoider, spender. So how would you deal with an avoider? Like if you, if one of your clients told you, mm. right, that they have all these money issues but they don't know how to confront them head on, like what would you recommend to a person? Well, the number one thing I would do, honestly, just to get started and, and get, get that person on the right track, I would say give me everything. So I would want, I would basically say give me your pay stubs, give me this. I would ask you the questions of what I need to know to get a, a a good sound financial a plan for you to achieve what you need, right? Um, I, I refer to them as F and A's. We need to know our F and A like we know our DNA. Mm -hmm. What's your financial needs analysis? Okay. What What do you need, right? I would just collect the information from you because trying to get you to sit down and have a conversation about it, I'm probably never going to get you to sit down and talk about it. But I would ask you for all the different pieces that I need. I'll get that set up, and then the next step for you, you're not a DIY person. You're a do it for you. So I'm going to do it for you. Put a system in place to support that plan that I just created. Got it. Your direct deposits are happening directly. Whatever you need to save, invest, all that stuff is happening directly. And then you have your go blow it if you want to money, right? And that's on a step. That's that card. This has whatever you can spend. You don't have to worry about did I save? It? Did I save? Like I said, I should have saved this month. Mm, did I invest? Smart. Did I do any of that? I, if you're an avoider, you you're not a DIY. You're someone, you're someone who's looking for someone to do it for you. Just tell me what to do. Yeah. And the same thing for the spender. Like, honestly, the only thing that's hard with the spender is you can put a plan in place. You can put the, the support system in place. 
but the part that is hard to control for the spender is you can do all the saving and investing, but that person's problem, you probably, the problem that that person has more than anything else, they may accumulate debt. Because they'll just, it'll be nothing for them to pick up a credit card and do it. Right? <laughs> and then it's like, it, it's like, it, all the saving and investing is in vain if you're saving and you're investing. And typically in the market, you can get anywhere from 8, 9, or 10% mm -hmm. on your money if you're investing in something as safe or conservative as a mutual fund. Okay. But if you're racking up credit card debt, and I mean, in this day and age, gone are the days where 17.99% or 19.99% is the interest you're paying on your, um, your purchases. No, it's usually like 23.99, yeah. 25.99. And God forbid someone has bad credit. So now you've canceled out all your saving and investing because if you're earning, you know, interest on your money, unless you're earning the equivalent of what you're paying what when you're you paying. do the debt, you've now canceled out what you're doing what you're here when it comes to what how you're, you're using your money and making your money work for you. So what I actually sat down um, with a financial planner mm -hmm. uh, a couple of weeks ago. You might remember who I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. And what I found, I found myself getting very defensive because he, he had a similar strategy like, you know, Shirley, lay it all out. I need this, 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 and this so I can get an idea of who is in front of me. Mm -hmm. And I found myself getting very defensive mm -hmm. about my purchases. So, like, for, for example, just on coffee, mm -hmm. Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks, per year, he did the numbers, and he said, you spend roughly about $865 a year just on coffee. So it was like, but I need my coffee to do my job. And he's like, but surely that's too much money. And I'm like, but I teach seventh grade. Like, I have to have caffeine, <laughs> and I need... So I was combative. Well, I mean, <laughs> it, it, to me, when you begin to tell someone... <laughs> I don't want to fall. <laughs> when you begin to tell someone something like that, it, you're almost setting them up to be defensive, right? I have to understand who you are as a person, not just what your numbers are yes. saying, right? I've dealt with clients that spend money on coffee every day, but that's great. Maybe coffee's not the area that we're going to, you know, achieve, you know, financial success, success here. And honestly, a cup of coffee or $800 a year is not what's going to make you a millionaire. It's not, right? So my, my conversation with you would probably more so be, okay, this is what you're spending on coffee. This is what you're spending on this. We're looking for creating a plan that is actually going to be doable for you. Yes. Not something that you have to feel like you're, you're like being stripped of yes. the things that you need most or yes. you love most, right? Mm -hmm. You find a happy balance in the middle. Yes. So I think you get defensive when it's something that you like really hold near and dear to you. And so it's it's like if someone tells you eight hundred dollars on coffee and, and then tells you that you can't have it and you go in every morning to deal with seventh graders, who are we kidding? Who are we kidding? But his point was that the money that you're not, he, he wasn't necessarily telling me not to spend it on that, but he's just like, if maybe you just made the coffee at home. He's like, Do you have a coffee maker at home? Yes, I do. Why don't you just try it? See how much you can save. And then take that money and go on a vacation. He's like, $800 is a, a plane ticket somewhere, you know, a hotel room, all-inclusive. So he framed it for me. He wasn't trying to make me, you know, combative, but... Uh, yeah, I'm sure once you guys talked through it, you got through what he was trying to say. But you just can't start with telling someone, you spend $800 <laughs> on coffee. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. And I think a lot of the times, if we're not mindful about how we approach the conversation around money... We're losing the battle before we've already started. Lose. They're going to lose. And then he was explaining to me that, like, the average person has less than $1,000 in, like, their savings account. That is 100% true. So he was like, most less people. Less than 1000 And he's like, most people, God forbid, if they lose their job, They're they can't miss true. one paycheck. No. Not one. And that's because we live in an, in an environment where we live paycheck to paycheck. We are spending, you know, every dollar that we make and more, Right. So that's one of the main things that is a, a tip for anyone that's looking to achieve any form of any form of financial success. You can't spend every dollar you earn. You can't. You have to. Bring, and I've done. I did it for years, where I basically told myself that I'm gonna. I can't. I can't spend two thousand dollars on a on a bag or a shoe. You know, every other paycheck. Yeah. It's not realistic, right? I didn't say I couldn't have it at all. Yeah. Right. But if I tell myself. For years, what I did is I treated myself to a particular item that I really wanted, whether it was mm -hmm. a, a nice pair of shoes or a pocketbook. Mm -hmm. I did it once a year around my birthday, right? So I was still, at this point, I built such a collection. Like, you would think that I'm balling out of control. <laughs> but what I did is just I paced myself and didn't tell myself I needed to have it, you know, all right now that's kind right. of thing. So I think that's what we have to look at is 
how can we decrease our expenses without necessarily depriving ourselves mm -hmm. of everything that we want, but how can we manage and balance the things that we need versus what we want, versus what we want and, yeah. you know, treating ourselves every now and then. It's like binge eating. Yeah. You tell yourself when you're on a diet, you eat nothing, and then you find yourself binge eating. <laughs> At 3 o'clock in the morning. It, it's the same thing when, when it comes to your finances. If We've you had don't, this conversation yeah. before as well, right? How, like, we're so consumer-driven yeah. that we need to have everything in the moment, yeah. and then we feel like we're overdoing it, so we stop doing it, mm -hmm. and then, then we just continue to do it's it. It's almost like you never stop. The amount of money you spend in that one, like, instance when you just break loose, yeah. it's almost as if you were spending it every week, every month anyway. Yeah. So yeah. You're that you shouldn't time. have stopped to begin with. Right. Uh, it, it, if when you do it that way, you're kind of setting yourself to have that reaction. We're all human. So you have to create a plan of something that feels mm -hmm. comfortable enough to operate and live with so you don't feel like you're being so deprived and you, you know, go that route of binging. It, it, and it's possible. I've, like I said, whatever it is, your coffee may not be the thing that you're going to, you know. I'm not giving up my coffee. Right. <laughs> so that may not be Let's it. Let's want kids to die, and y'all know y'all don't want that, and I don't want to go to prison. That may not I be it. I need my coffee. That may so. not be it, but there, there will be something that you're more open or willing to compromise with, that if your goal is to save, you know, $3,000 a year, how do we create a plan around, you know, Do saving that, that $3,000 a year that you're comfortable with and you can live with? And I, I don't want to spell it out that everything about getting to financial success is going to be comfortable. Yeah. It's not, yeah. you know, in, in order to get any type of success, a lot of the times you have to be willing to get uncomfortable. That's right. Right? But you also have to be honest with yourself about what, you're, what you can do, what you can't do, and what you're capable of and what you're not That's capable right. of. Right? If you're not honest with yourself about that, you're almost just, you're lying to yourself and you're setting yourself up for failure. Mm -hmm. I know one thing. For me, uh, as I get older and I'm approaching retirement, what, what I'm seeing is people are dying, yes. and they're dying younger and younger. And so for me, it's like my mind is telling me, you know what, you have one life you need to live now. You need to do this now because YOLO. you may not be, YOLO, <laughs> you may not be here at 55, God forbid. Mm -hmm. Hot so, girl summer. Hot girl summer, hot girl winter, hot girl this fall. Is one of my, uh, hot girl life. Hot girl life. <laughs> I would say one of my social life. media friends, she posted the other day, she's not trying to have a hot girl summer, she's trying to have uh, hot wife life. Hot wife life. She said hot wife for life. And I was like, yeah, that's more of a goal. And that goes to this conversation, right? We like to talk about our culture of people not um, having certain advantages. But the reality is the reason why we don't have the advantages is because we're not willing to sacrifice anything up front. Up front. Period. Absolutely How right. can we talk about generational wealth but we're not doing anything to accumulate wealth to, to, to basically transfer? Mm -hmm. Generational wealth is you transferring wealth from one generation right. to the next. So if you spend it all now, you never get to a point of generational wealth. And so many of us see that in our homes when we're growing up. Yes. So what knowledge is being passed down? Because it's not just the money, right? It's also the knowledge yeah. that our parents yeah. pass down from generation yeah. to generation. Yeah. My grandparents didn't have it. My parents didn't have it. And I feel like now I'm struggling. The onus is on you to try to... It's such a current, though. Like, how do I combat that? Well, I mean, there's the some world. things that we can do that, in my eyes, it kind of gives us an instant opportunity to um, create wealth, right? Or something mm -hmm. that we can transfer. Mm -hmm. And it, one of them, it's like it, you're creating an instant estate for yourself if you just go and get life insurance. Yeah. It's one of the things that annoys the mess out of me when I see people sending um, collection plates around, GoFundMe go and stuff like that. It annoys me yeah. a lot because I think that if we would just do even the bare minimal yeah. of saying that we're, we will have life insurance policies, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if something happens to you, not only does your family not have to deal with grief and then dealing oh, with the burden right. of how are we going to take care of funeral arrangements, right. they're also left with nothing after you leave. Life insurance is not just about burying you. That's Life right. insurance is income protection. When you leave this earth, your family should afford to live the same lifestyle as if you were still here. Actually better, because better. that house should be paid off, right. those bills should be paid off, so it's, that it's they don't have the that same yeah. It's the same or better, right? I totally so agree. It's an, it, that, to me, is one of the things that is the easiest thing for us to do that we don't do. And a lot of people say, well, I can't afford that month to month. How do you say that when month to month you afford going out to have drinks? You know, every, every week brunches. for, for yeah. happy hour brunches, mm -hmm. you're spending those 30, 40. Those are affordable, right? More than affordable. More than affordable. So, I mean, <laughs> it, it depending, <clears throat> depending on your age, you know, it, it can vary in what you pay in premiums per month. But honestly, if I pass, I would want my mom, and my mom knows this, like, I always tell her, like, Mommy, I'm updating such and such, I'm updating such mm -hmm. and such. And I'm like, 
I know you don't want me to go before you, but I want to make sure that if I'm not here, the things that I'm able to do for you now, That's that right. you're still able to do that, right? That's right. And it's even more important for people that are married with, and with children, you know? Like, you should at least do the bare minimum that if you should leave this earth, mm -hmm. your family can have the same lifestyle right. or better right. with you leaving here. A million dollar policy. What would, it, what would that do for the next generation coming behind? That's right. If I, if I pass and I have a million dollar policy, and of course you, you have to protect that as well, mm -hmm. right? You have to have a will and a state mm -hmm. plan to make mm -hmm. sure that it's not eaten up by taxes because yeah. they love to take your money. Estate tax. You know, but you, you want to make sure that something like that is there. So if you do go, hey, that's a million dollars. The house could be paid off. Now that's an asset to your family. So it's a home that could possibly stay in the family forever. Yeah. Some things I honestly think that as a, a culture of people, we can do differently and we can do better. That's we really can. good advice, Amiko. It is. That's and really good advice. You don't do that often, do you? I don't know that. And it's a lot of times because of our families don't know. Or they know, but they don't feel like sharing this information with us. Like, Emmanuel's good. God forbid if I die. But you're not having that conversation right. with Emmanuel on how he can do the same for his family. Right. We used to joke around, because my dad has one. We used to always joke around, me and my mom, about how we were going to put a hit on my dad. <laughs> just so we could get that insurance money. <laughs> money. insurance money. Do you know a lot of people don't get it because they literally tell themselves, oh, you're trying to put me in my grave you're before my time. Me. I'm like, no, we're just trying to make sure that if you do go in the grave, that we're, everything you is okay. That and you don't never know. know. And it's an, it's an assurity, right? We, we all know that at some point, we all will go in one way or another, right? And that's the conversation that probably makes it harder to talk about life insurance mm -hmm. because no one wants to think about that part. And so they avoid, again, the, we have the avoiders. <laughs> <laughs> they I'm avoid having the conversation altogether because it's around thinking, them pa thinking about them passing. And it's really not... Um, it's really not about you passing that it should be the focal of the conversation. It's about what are we going to do to ensure that our family and our legacy is protected and that we have something to transfer to the next generation. Next generation. You, you don't have generational wealth unless you're putting yourself in a position to transfer wealth. Let me ask you this. How important is it? On a, let's do a Likert scale. Scale from 1 to 10. Mm -hmm. How important is it for an individual to own property? Because I had an ex coworker, who actually was an ex principal who shall remain nameless, who said that narrows it down. Oh, there, I've had like five, I've had like five, five or six. Let's do process of elimination. <laughs> who does own a home? No. Um, this person said, I don't want to buy a house right mm -hmm. now because at my age, by the time it's paid off, I'll probably be dead or, you know. At this age, I want to just enjoy my life. I don't see the point of being tied down to a mortgage. I might want to move out of New York. Is that sound advice for this person to just keep doing what you're doing and not buy a house, or should this person go ahead and buy property? I, I think this person is a little bit, um, I would say, Misguided. naive <laughs> to what property is about, right? Mm -hmm. So even if you should decide to to move, sell it. Just sell the house. You, you, may have, you may have equity in that house, right? So if, say I, I, I buy a house right now 15 or 20 years from now the house may be worth double it may be worth a hundred thousand dollars more than what i purchased it for so if i'm ready to relocate and i sell that house and i have a hundred thousand dollars of equity in it wherever it is i'm moving to i now have a head start i still have that start i'm not scurrying to put together deposits you know first and last month's rent mm -hmm. plus the broker's fee like you literally would be sitting on a pot of money Mm -hmm. Right, and again, wow. that's everything that it has to do with timing, because with timing, you know, you could also have be on the flip side of that where maybe the market is down, mm -hmm. but you always have to look at real estate as if it is an asset, because if it's not a great time to sell, it will always be a great time to rent. That's right, because everyone needs to so live somewhere, right? So even if I decide to move, the market is not in my favor. I can rent that property out, and mind you. Whatever my mortgage is when I bought it 10 or 15 or 20 years ago, my mortgage higher. may be, let's say, $1,200, let's, let's say, right? But the market right now for a three-bedroom, two-bath um, apartment may be $1,800, $1,900. I just created monthly cash flow for myself. Yep. 
So wherever I'm moving, yeah, yeah. I automatically know that I have an extra eight or nine hundred dollars coming to me mm -hmm. per month, cash flowing from this property because it wasn't a great time to sell, so I couldn't get my lump sum mm -hmm. of money. But I have a monthly cash flow that'll help me afford whatever lifestyle I'm deciding to live Absolutely. when I go somewhere else. And I, I have, I've, the only reason I'm actually in the process of buying house, my first house. And the only reason I did it is because I wasn't sure that I wanted to stay here and I didn't want the burden of having to be somebody's landlord. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm an only well, child. you don't have to be. There's property managers, right? There's property managers. So property managers charge you somewhere between 8 to 10% as a managing fee. And it's worth every penny because you don't have to you don't deal have with to deal with a headache. headache. You don't have to deal with a headache. But what I was trying to explain to this person is even once you get older and that house is paid off, mm -hmm. right? You, God forbid, get in a tight, a tight situation or buying as a senior citizen, you can do a reverse mortgage where you get payments sent to you, sent to you based on what your house has in equity or in what equity. the house is worth. So even that house that you may not want to sell, you can get basically like a loan yeah. to yourself. So again, it's an asset. However it is, whether it is that you sell it and you get a lump sum out of it, whether it is that you rent it and you it's get an monthly asset. cash flow, whether it is that you don't That's sell it and you're not renting, but you need a lump sum of money and you have equity in the house, you can always pull equity out of that home to use it. But again, even with all those different things and those options, you have to make sure that you are managing money well and that you're being financially savvy. Absolutely. If you're going to pull out the money and do something with it that does not produce anything mm -hmm. for you, then you just spent the money because now that that's a debt at that point, right? Now. Mm -hmm. So you're paying it. So when you're doing stuff like that, you just always have to be conscious, financially conscious of, you know, what you're doing with your money, you know, how you are going to have that money work for you because I'm right. a big fan of my money working for me. That's right. Right? That's right. Um, positioning yourself in that way. It's always an asset. And also knowing, I think, what's going on, like even though – you guys might have a six-figure income, you know, hubby or wifey, you know, the one that pays all the bills. You still need to know what's happening in case, mm -hmm. God forbid, something happens to that person. You yeah. can take over where they left off, and you'd be surprised, like, how many people don't know how to run the income that's coming into the house because somebody else is doing it. Right, and that, I mean, relationship 101. Yeah. You talk about money. Mm -hmm. Because between the financial strain that it can put on a relationship, it can end relationships, it can devastate relationships mm -hmm. in that, say, say something happens, like you just said, something happens to your spouse. If you put yourself in a position where you've been oblivious, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's almost as if all the hard work was never done. It was never done. Because I've seen people, I, when I say lose everything, yeah. just because they had no clue, no idea, and it's like, well, dag, it was... 20 well, years they, worth of yeah. paying this mortgage on this home and they lose the home because the taxes, the taxes wasn't <laughs> paid. There, there are literally people out there preying on people who haven't paid taxes on their property to buy their property through a tax lien yeah. and they're getting property that's worth a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars for like five thousand dollars. Just for oh, the, the, the back. The taxes. Yeah. That's crazy. The back taxes. They're buying property at fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, 20000 and yeah. the property is worth 200000 And unfortunately, a lot of those victims are the elderly. Elderly people. Who the son, children were taking care of bills, you know, somebody died, and, you know, now grandma's left and doesn't and know she that doesn't she's going to pay taxes every and year, and they take her so house from her. where does grandma go? They snatch her home, and she goes they to the They snatch her home, home, and yeah. And it goes to the state, and the state preys on people. They have, a, like, a running list. Yeah of people that are like redlining. And not even st just the state now. Everyone knows the value oh, of real estate. Real you estate. even have real estate investors that are out there. Like sharks. They, they are going down to the courthouse, getting court records, yeah. finding out any property that has a tax lien on it, purchasing those tax liens, and getting the property, and, you know, not caring about the person in it. Mm -hmm. There are, to me, there are some real estate investors that have integrity and they may get the property in hand that way but they'll also work something out with the owner mm -hmm. that's in it and says hey you don't have to leave your house you can just pay rent I'm okay with you staying yeah. but a lot of them don't do that they don't they and you're don't. out of a home so in relationships um, it doesn't matter what type of relationship it is it's, it's really good to have the conversation around money and what what's going on when it comes to the household yeah. because if something should happen even unplanned at least you know, you're not like just, you know, thrown out there to the wolves. You, you had no idea certain things were going I had on. No idea. I think we should take a break. Wow. Um, this is a lot. We have time for a break, though? <laughs> I feel really. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take a quick break and then we'll come back and we'll see you come on. I do want to talk about 
different types of income, Shamika. Yes. Yes. Cool. Different income streams and how you can maximize. All right. When we come back on the comment section. Of the comment section. This is so enlightening, and I almost want to have her back for like part two. <laughs> and part three and four. We still have questions. <laughs> we need help. She has a segment. She has a segment on the show. But we wanted to, real quick, we have about five minutes. We wanted to talk quickly or have you tell us what are like the top three income streams that ways that people can bring in money that are not too difficult or too strenuous? Okay, I think the ones that we don't realize is right in front of our faces. We all understand earned income. That's your trading time for money, you go to work, you get a paycheck. And I think we get stuck on that one. But the one, the other two that I'll say to that, that anyone should be able to do is interest income. Mm. And that's earning interest on your money. And then I'll say like capital gains. Okay. And those two, the reason why I say those two are probably something that's common and, and easy for anyone to do is because if you at least at bare minimum participate, if you're doing earned income and you're working for a job and they offer any form of retirement plan mm -hmm. 
to me, right there, you're giving yourself an opportunity to earn another stream of income. Mm -hmm. Most companies with retirement um, plans, they give you some form of match, right? Yes. So when you don't participate in that retirement plan, you're leaving money on the table. That's if they right. say to you, for every dollar that you put in, I'm giving you 50 cents, and you don't do it, that means every hundred dollars that you would put in, they would give you 50, $50. and you're not participating. Mm -hmm. And so now that's money on the table. So in addition to putting the money in the retirement plan and then matching you, that money over time is earning interest. So now you have another stream of income. You're getting a match, you're getting interest income, and then when I say capital gains is the next one, is typically if you own stock, mm -hmm. you know, you're investing, you say every month I'm going to buy some form of stock, mm -hmm. and this is, this, this I want everyone to do and understand. You should own stock in anything you spend your money on. Amen. If you are a fan of Kellogg's cereal, <laughs> there has a no Baby Shark <laughs> version coming out this week for Shark Week. Thank you. <laughs> no, but seriously, like you, you can buy stock in anything that you you know spend money on. If yes. You have you know Netflix. I mean now, anyone that was smart earlier on, now to buy Netflix stock is a lot. Excuse me, but if you were buying stock all along, what would that be worth for you today, mm -hmm. right? If you sold that stock, if you bought it. 10 years ago, you know, before it got so expensive and you sold it today, the money that you make in between what you bought it for and what you, what you sell it for is now capital gains. Capital gains. The great thing about capital gains, which is much better than earned income, guess what it is? What? Taxes. You only pay 10% taxes 10 on capital gains. 10% taxes. So it would be who you that's, to that's, have that's, that's what you pay. And children can <laughs> own stock. Children so can if own your stock was worth or is worth a million dollars. You would get 900000 Yeah, you would pay 10%. That's 10%. the tax that's on it. it. Capital gains tax is 10%. That's awesome. How does one begin to invest? Because I feel like <laughs> I want to start investing. You can in do penny stuff. stocks, right? You can do penny stocks. Some of those um, are risky in that they don't jump in value. Yeah. You know, uh, they have an initial jump. So when they initially create this penny stock, you buy it for like dirt cheap. And it may jump up to a dollar or $2, and that's where you'll make your money. But some of them don't make it to like... $50 right. per share, or, you know, but you can start, you know, open up a brokerage account. You go to, I'm not, I won't plug any specific person. If you would <laughs> like to begin investing, you can reach out to me. I can help you with starting up Amen. a brokerage account for you to invest with mutual funds and stocks. And tell me where they can um, find you. Oh, you can find me <laughs> on social media everywhere at Shamika Murphy. If you'd like to book time with me, you can go to www.shamikamurphy.com. And um, I'll be able to help you with that. But <laughs> understand that, you know, stock, it not, you're not just putting your money in it and buying it. Understand that when it grows in value and you sell it, right. you're at an adva a tax advantage because that income won't be taxed at your normal earned income rate, which is substantially higher. You're paying only 10%. Wait, I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. So, what, nobody, we about to be in these stock buying streets now? <laughs> I'll be the wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> the wolf of the the Wall Street. Wall Street. <laughs> the fox of Wall Street. <laughs> I'm going to start investing in everything. The oh, oh, that is hilarious. Oh, my God. We probably have, like, what, a minute left? All right, quickly. Yes. For the W-2, us mere mortal W-2 people mm -hmm. that do not have for-profit businesses, mm -hmm. what are some quick tips that you can give us to maximize the peanuts that we're making, you know, working for other people <clears throat> at tax time? What can we do? Well, the, the most important thing, I'll go back to the streams of income that we just talked about, right? Mm -hmm. Retirement plans. Anything that you can participate in that um, you're using pre-tax dollars, mm -hmm. you're helping yourself. Because it's lowering your taxable income. Okay. So any form of um, program that is done with pre-tax dollars that are qualified programs, participate. Mm -hmm. And max, max, max it, it out. out. Max it, was it 15% for? Max it out because at the end of the day, it lowers your taxable income. You're doing something for yourself because that's money that you will have down the line. And when you, when you actually need it later on, you'll basically pay a lower tax a lower on tax, it right. than what you would be paying right now if you didn't contribute to that. And a lot of people, again, it's that same mentality, that instant gratification. They don't want to have less of a paycheck because they want the money now, right. not realizing that they're hurting themselves but they'll, in the long And run. they'll need the money later on because at the end of the day, cost of living is going up, not down. Cost of living is going up. And God forbid you get sick. I mean, I, yeah. I'm going to need you my health You get older and you're on a fixed income. Wouldn't it be great if you had a 401k plan 
or an annuity, something, something, something sitting there that's going to pay you out. Yeah. So I've learned a few things today. Get a life insurance. <laughs> Get life policy, insurance if you don't right? have it already. Invest. Invest in your coins. Buy a house. Retirement plan. Retirement plan. Your retirement plan. I mean, yeah. I already do that one, so I'm I'm one one step ahead of the game Thank here. Thank you. And stop buying eight hundred dollar loafers. They are not eight hundred. Are you maxing out your retirement plan? I am not, but I'm about to. We, about are, we are going to talk about that. We're going to talk. <laughs> Thank you so much, you guys, for joining us. And as usual, please, 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 please reach out to us at NY Comments section on Instagram, Facebook comments. God section. bless my haters. God bless fake hoes. God bless these uh, haters. Because God don't need no way. This is great. Thank you, Shmiga. So God bless you snake niggas, God bless you snake hoes, God bless you fake players, cause God don't leave no tag. All I do is get it, all I do is make it mine, all I do is get it, crack it, get it, poppin' every time, nigga. All I do is get it, all I do is live it, all I do is spend it for the days that daddy did it. So God bless these haters, God bless these hoes. God bless these fake friends that turn out to be foes Telling me God is my maker And God bless this paper So God bless me, I chase you Until I meet my maker All I do is get it All I, all I do is get it All I do is get it All I, all I do is get it All I do is get it All I, all I do is get it All I do is get it All I, all I do is get it I used to wish I was a star in my past life Dreams are all that keep you warm on them cold nights I used to hide behind my walls and watch my parents fight Watch daddy break a jaw, cause then it wasn't right So please forgive me if I live my life I'm never worried about being some niggas f***ing wife